Welcome to Tuesday at 7. It is the beginning of June 2024 for those who are date stamping it because yeah. people can be looking back on this interview for years to come. They will be. And we're excited <laughs> because we are in Lee Brooklyn's studio. If you, if you guys are in a drawing class, you probably have either drawn next to Lee because you participated in several yep. of those, right? At the Murray Hill Life Drawing Group, yes. And you're also a model. For the pretentious portrait artist. Yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> there's going to be a bunch of folks that, uh, that recognize Lee's face because we've drawn her face. Yeah. But there's going to be a lot of folks that are going to recognize some of your work, too, because yeah, that's out there. It's out there. And, and we're excited <laughs> uh, to understand a little about your journey, um, maybe some of the inspirations along the way. Uh -huh. And... Uh, and we want to encourage you folks, too, to ask questions. Even if you're not joining live, if you're there watching the recorded session, please still ask those questions because those are important and it allows Lee or I or Craig, who's behind the camera, um, to respond as well. But uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Of course. Thanks for having me. If you were with us last week, we, were, we interviewed with um, a prodigy, Beats Barlow. Oh. Beats is uh, is in the midst. She just finished her first year at the, I call it the Savini School over in, in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And she's a cosplayer and she's a designer and she's learning effects makeup, which she already has a pretty good grasp of. And uh, and we had like I don't know, well over 2,000 people who watched mm -hmm. her. You know, she's across the, the starting line and she's running. So um, thank you. Beats for joining us and everybody who, who watched that interview. But for everybody who shared that video last week, your name is in this hat. And, and you get not only a piece of Beats um, design work, there's also a signed poster by, uh, by Ted Sikora of Hero Tomorrow. Comics. Okay. So there's two things. Anyway, wow. I go ahead and just I pick? yeah, just choose a choose Ooh. a winner and okay. Joseph Sherbert the third. The third. Yeah, Joseph. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, your name has not been pulled yet, but uh, thank you for sharing. We'll connect uh, by direct messaging, and we'll get those uh, that artwork over to you. Thank okay. you for sharing. There but. You know. If you share the video today, there's also a giveaway. There is. You, you want to share that real quick? I will share that. All right. Follow me. My tight corridors. So, well, let me say, because most people, we'll get back to this. Yeah. Have seen these love bomb grenades I've made. They're all over the, literally all over the country. But I'm giving away the start of this before these grenades which was this drawing I did of a love bomb grenade. So I was doing these to raise money for a charity. I was actually raising money for a domestic abuse shelter um, back in 2020. And the story got picked up all over the place. It was um, the National Museum for Women in the Arts. It was on Spectrum News. So I'm giving away one of these drawings. They're not a print. It's all handmade with um, a Micron pen. So this is what you get. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> the, uh, so for those folks who may not have uh, participated in Tuesday 7 before, we encourage you to share. Because when you share, it can go out to your friends list, maybe another group. When you share, you press that button in the very bottom left-hand side. Sometimes there's an arrow. But when you share, it will prompt you as to what to do next. You can share to an individual. If you're like, there's somebody on my friends list or several people who should see this interview, mm -hmm. you can share it to one. Or what we encourage you to do is share it to a group. Or share it to your friends list so it can go out to more because our goal is to get as many people checking out Lee's artwork and her story as there possible. You and your shares uh, help us do that. <laughs> but thank you for, uh, of for that generous, uh, that of generous course. gift. Um, considering the, considering the, uh, um, the grenade. Yeah. We've seen that grenade series. Yes, like, there's like, a like, lot. Is, tell us the number. Like, wh why do you think that caught people's attention? And um, Well, it was based on love bombing, which is something that abusers do, where they um, overwhelm 
um, their victims with these grandiose displays of affection, and they devalue them, and then they discard them. And I think um, it's now becoming a pretty common term. So I think that's why it, it kicked it uh, picked up. But um, so originally I did this raising money, and then I have a military family, so I'd ask my mom if they had any grenades, and they do, <laughs> and they were these dummy like. They're inert grenades and they're hollowed out, so you know they aren't going to go off. Not going to go off, but <laughs> <laughs> but I started painting on them, and I wasn't even sure what kind of paint to use, but it worked. And then I um, started making display cases, and um, yeah, I started getting them in the galleries, and then they just been selling. So now I'm like getting them in more and more galleries, and they're all over the country now. So it's pretty cool. You're painting on metal. I'm painting those, on those metal. are actually inert, but they're actually metal grenades. Yeah, they're real. Yeah, yeah, they're actually they're actually illegal in California. So I do a little thing so that they are not illegal, and I had to figure that out because I work with the gallery there. Um, do, do you mind bringing that close and just just allowing folks yeah. to get a? In so this one's got a little scuff, but this is my copy of one. But it um, yeah, I just paint it and coming up with the design. I have like some other designs I did. Um, this one I did after this was, uh, this one's, oh, cause there's a series. So each one's hand painted. So then this one was like a no justice, no peace one. Um, I sold quite a few of these too, but the most popular are these. And so they have like different color combos that I do for them. And then I have like a custom display case over there. Um, yeah. And they're just, they're great. People love them. Do you, so. you remember what paint you used just for, just for the I used of, uh, just oil paints. Just oil yeah, paint. I, I tried with like acrylic paint and uh, that just peels off. And I don't even know if this is perfectly set, but, um, you know, they're in the display case. So they, they are fine. They yeah. hold up really well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've noticed, I've noticed, I should say that along the same lines of, you know, the grenades, and maybe that's, maybe that's because you've come from a military family that's that, part of it, that, yeah. that I see <laughs> some other, um, inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. D d tell us about that. Um, well, so I was just doing this, like, um, at the time in 2020, I was like looking for this, like an empowerment and like, I had personal upheaval. And so I just wanted to like find my inner strength. Um, so I started painting on grenades and I started, um, reaching out to different women and dressing them up as soldiers. And then I did all these photo shoots and then I was drawing them and painting them and then sculpting them. Um, and so, yeah, that carries through. Um, and I also do like street photography and stuff like that. So that's like coming back around, but um, in the military family. So it all kind of just morphed together as this like uh, kind of women empowerment thing. So. And, 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 and a voice, a, a voice for folks that, uh, that might have similar similar thoughts, right? Or, or yeah. have encountered similar things. What folks do you find are drawn to your story? In other words, you know, mm -hmm. as you're kind of pushing it out, you're like, wait a minute, I'm connecting with folks that I yeah. didn't expect to connect with. Tell us a little bit about your audience. Well, I noticed, so like I just had this show in Chicago, and so I noticed I never showed in front of that many people that didn't know me, that many people, period, like all at once. As I noticed the people that were being drawn to my work big time there. And it was a lot of women, a lot of people of color. Um, cause I focused prior to doing like the soldier thing, I was doing street photography in Los Angeles. And when I was doing that, I was focused on marginalized people. So I would go through skid row and I'd photograph the homeless and anybody I met in like downtown Los Angeles. So it was, uh, transgender individuals. It was kind of just like who I came across, uh, the police sometimes, all these different people. Um, and so those people and women are very drawn to my work, I think, because uh, there's kind of a message and it's kind of uh, the underdog and, and giving a voice to the voiceless in a lot of ways. Yeah. 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 I, because I love three dimensional, I love sculpting. Yeah. I've noticed some of your uh, some of your sculpt sculptures as well as yeah. some of your kind of in process as you're hand sculpting some of these. Yeah. Can, can give us a, a sneak peek if you don't mind. Um, and, and, and now, um, man, I don't know where to start. Yeah, you know what? Um, 
Well, this was um, this piece. So this was this is the clay. This is one of my first sculptures, and so that I was I realized as I was sculpting myself when I you know look in the mirror, I had to turn it around um, because it's in reverse in the mirror, <laughs> so that changed things. Uh, I did a life cast of my face that's over here. I don't know if you can see um, the life cast over here. If you want to hand me this, I'll, I'll, I'll put that life cast there. In. And I did this so that I could see my face. Um, although, you know, my eyes were shut, but I did a few. And then I did like other, like my neck, that was hard to do. Just for reference. Um, so and that was you sculpted was some out of the mirror. You sculpted some yeah, it was the every, face cast. And well, I, this was just reference. Okay. I didn't use that. But yeah, it was. I looked at that and I looked in the mirror. And then I sculpted this. And then I cast it. Um, I had a show at Kaiser Gallery, which is an awesome gallery in Tremont. Tanya Kaiser runs it. And uh, she gave me my first solo show in Cleveland. So I felt like nobody was really paying much attention to me at that point. And um, I was cast it like a few days before the show. And it, this one up here, the cast, not really knowing 100% what I was doing. Um, so this is um, a plaster cast or gypsum, whichever you So, So it. you made a mold of this one, right? Uh -huh. And this is, is this your first pull? Is this your first pull of that? that um, yeah, mold? with this plaster. I did a resin cast in the past. With fiberglass, I, I studied under David Deming doing sculpture. He like mentored me and he was the past president of Cleveland Institute of Art. And I kind of just reached out to him as I do. I said, hey, will you teach me? And he's like, sure, come on by. And I think part of it, because I went to CIA, that would, you know, help me get in the door. <laughs> but uh, so he taught me how to do my first clay sculpture. And then we cast it. He asked if I wanted to cast it in resin or plaster. And I said resin because I felt like plaster seemed easier. So I thought I'd learn more with the resin. And we cast that. But I never cast in like, well, there was a whole mishap. There's all these things that happen. So like I was, I did a test of this piece the way he showed me with the plaster. But so there was some chemical reaction on my test piece that it turned the clay into mush. And so I was kind of freaking out. Like now what do I do? Like, oh, you know, a couple weeks before my show because it takes a while. So then I had to do like my first like silicone mold and then the, the plaster jacket. And then it was a whole process. I, I know that there are a lot of folks that are in our community that are sculptors. Yeah. Right? And uh, so this piece, is this like a giant lazy Susan that you could spin or? Well, this, so this stand here is what I actually sculpted this on. And it was oh. on top of here, this lazy Susan. So it allowed one. you to rotate it. You yeah. got some nice strong armature underneath there too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did. I had to build up more armature on here yeah. as I was making it because the, the shoulder started to fall down. But um, now I'm trying to get more into like relief sculpture. Um, but Talk about relief sculpture. Uh, so, you know, that's like the flat sculpture. There's like one, this is like, this is an idea. I'll show you. It broke. And I let it dry out because I'm going to redo it. <laughs> but this was like, so what I'm like working on is this, these like reliefs. Um, see, I got to fix that. But uh, so there'll be like graffiti and stuff. And then I'll, I'm going to cast this in plaster again. And then I'm probably going to carve it in stone. That's what I'm going to do as a practice. I don't know if they'll all be in stone because it takes a while, but I'm going to be doing, I basically need to make my paintings more 3D because right now, even though the paintings are done well, they're not unique enough, mm -hmm. in my opinion, to stand out on the world market. So when I make them sculptural, that'll be more unique. You know, I, I, want, I want to come back to that yes. sculpture piece, but before that, I want to explore some of your paintings because your okay. paintings are striking you know they they certainly tell a story um well, your drawings. Here, there's this one yeah this one <clears throat> um i did and it's over here because i'm working on this piece and i, I want to make sure that they uh are cohesive and so like this is the same size as this and then there's another one i'm doing this is like two paintings that are going to go together oh that, you, you got this one here as well yeah on the, this on one easel. is i'm working on pink hair. So this was when I was doing street photography, actually. This one, 
actually, and so was this. This was street photography. She was in, um, actually, I met her in Little Italy at the Feast of the Assumption. And I just, it got me really good at, like, randomly approaching people and talking to people is doing street photography because you just go up to people that you don't know and say, hey, can I take your picture? And half the time they look at you like you're a weirdo. But then sometimes they say yes. And then, and then you now see, like, you know, who's going to actually pose well and who's going to get awkward. So it's like a 25% chance they might be okay. <laughs> it's, it's good. But it's, you need a lot of people, so I don't know. You need, you need a lot of models. Yeah. Like, I got to ask 20 to get, you know, mm -hmm. a handful of, of good models. The painting. Yeah. Is that pretty true to life, or did you this modify was, some of that painting to tell a different story? Um, I took out some stuff. Like, she had more keys and stuff in her hand. I took that out. I, I, I... I just, so she was holding her phone. I put like a piece of paper there. I, oh, I was thinking it was like, so this says liberty. It's like upside down and backwards if you look at it in the mirror. So it's kind of, I was, I guess I was thinking about the abortion rights and stuff mm -hmm. like that and her with this kid. And so this was almost going to be like her voting thing. Um, and I also didn't want to show like her iPhone because I thought they would date it more showing like a technology thing. Um, but so yeah, I tweak it a little bit. Um, I'm always like debating what I'm going to do for the background color. So this background was pink at one point. Now it's, I like this color though. But this one might be a pink background because she has pink hair. But like this girl, um, she was a rapper I met in Hollywood in Los, out, you know, Los Angeles. Uh, and she was there trying to make it. And so I have this piece and I have another one I'm, I'm going to work on of another girl who has the same pose, a white girl. Same pose, pink hair also, and she, totally different lifestyle, but they have the same exact pose. So I thought they could, like, still tell a story together. Yeah. And uh, the other girl, like, makes lace, and I think she teaches in New York and has done stuff with the Metropolitan and stuff. So it's it's kind of interesting seeing the two next to each other. So, but this one I'm working on now. Oil paint? <laughs> oil painting, oil yeah. Is, is that your favorite um, painting? paint medium? Yeah, I don't really like and I don't like watercolor, you know, because I feel like uh, you could spend just as long on it. It might not be worth as much money. And, you know, my watercolor, if you do a watercolor, you walk outside, and it gets wet, it's ruined. You know, these these last, they're pretty resilient. So I like them and it blends well. I, I certainly um, feel your style and uh, and it's real and I don't know if the word is gritty, but it, it's real. It's and but I yeah. see it in your drawings too. Yeah. Were you did you were you doing the the drawings at the same time? Did you learn painting and drawing at? Uh, that's a stupid um, question, but but. Well, I saw so when I was in high school. I did drawing, and I was like doing like I got this book, How to Do Realistic Portraits in Graphite, and I drew. This was probably. 10th grade. Yeah, 10th grade. And I drew every picture in this book until it looked exactly like the picture in the book for portraits. And then uh, my high school teacher, Mr. Farshman, told me about juxtapositioning and I started doing like surreal art. So I did all these surreal portraits that were also very realistic, but surreal and crazy, like made of puzzle pieces and stuff like that. I showed them at uh, the one time I only ever showed these was at Kaiser Gallery for that show. Uh, and there was like 20 something of them. And so I did drawings. Um, I started to teach myself oil painting in high school. I started to work under another artist. I'm not gonna say his name in Westlake, but he got a little weird. So I stopped working with him. Mm -hmm. And um, so I didn't learn oil painting from him. Uh, and then I went to art school, uh, first Columbus College of Art and Design. And they didn't paint like the way I paint. I mean, it was, I didn't, I don't know. It was like life stuff and it was just get it done fast. Kind of, I didn't really feel like I was learning a ton there. So I left. Um, and then it wasn't until like, so I didn't do any more painting until after I graduated. And then I started to teach myself how to paint. So, and then, but then I moved like 15 times. And so stuff was always boxed up. So I didn't really like get to really start here much until like 2020 because I was moving so much. So. You mind sharing uh, maybe this this drawing because oh yeah, it, it it's has my only drawing. <laughs> well, I guess there's these. Yeah, if you can see this, I don't want to move it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to step out of the way here. Mm -hmm. 
Good. Yeah, so um, this was when I was doing all the photo shoots of the women dressed like these soldiers. Now, and this is, this is cross-hatching. It's like a very tight cross-hatching, which it didn't start that way. It was I was looser with it initially. Is, is that ink or is that graphite? This is graphite. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's ink, though. That There's a big love bomb grenade up there. But, um, yeah, so I started... Uh, doing these rough crosshatch drawings as preliminary work for my paintings. And then mm. people are like, oh, I like your cross crosshatching. So then I like did more with it. And then because my background is a biomedical illustrator, I'm like OCD. <laughs> now I feel like they, I don't know, I'm so tight now with everything and like detail, detail, detail. Uh, so it got more and more detailed and OCD. And then I'm like always concerned with accuracy and anatomy and stuff like that Sh -sh share with us how that how that uh, study in biomedical uh, you know illustration besides the fact that you are aware of precision yeah how, um, how that might affect you know your work and, and what you're doing now well um, I like figurative art and so you know studying anatomy and the figure that went big time into it I also it was digital. The whole major was digital. Mm. Like we would kind of do a drawing, like a line drawing, scan it in, finish it in Photoshop or Illustrator. But we didn't do uh, any painting or anything like that. We did a couple finished drawings, but it was just very detail oriented, very much about how accurate is this. And, it, and so I'm always looking at anatomy, which now getting into sculpture, anatomy is way more important with sculpture than with painting because you know with a with a painting or a drawing you can like fake your you know knowledge of anatomy because you're like this area is dark so I'm gonna make my drawing dark here and it makes sense but with the sculpture the lighting's changing constantly every the angle's changing like you have to know the anatomy for that um which I just I love it so um I'm really into the any questions here? Ray B. Lowe wants to know how did you acquire your job in the biomedical well, so I was, as a student, they had like internship opportunities while you're a student. Um, I didn't really do, I kind of quit right when I graduated, right when I graduated, but I was interning, I interned at the Cleveland Clinic, um, and you have to have like experience there, I think it was five years of experience, or have your master's, uh, which I don't have, um, and then I was freelancing for university hospitals in their gastroenterology department. And um, they were gonna continue working with me, but then I moved to California, like three days after I graduated. So I did one, I finished up the last project with them, uh, which you can look up online. It was like esophageal cancer staging, very attractive and it's online, <laughs> Google images. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, you interned and then that was it. I mean, there's a lot of jobs for it, but I think having CIA as the connection for that was really good. I'm, I've been out of it for a while now, and it's changed, so it's a little different now. But such a necessary foundation for the the direction your work is you know, yeah. taken and is now, right? The anatomy part, for sure, has yeah. been helpful, and like like we saw the cadavers, and you know, I was in like live surgeries and watching them cut people open and seeing their heart pound in their chest. Like it was really, it was really cool. It was a lot of work and there was time, like I just, I slept every third day through the major, like I didn't sleep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really cool. It, it ties back and then like the digital stuff, I use that, I use Photoshop a lot, Illustrator a lot um, for like coming up, putting my compositions together testing colors out, then even like designing a business card, all those like little things. So that was helpful too, knowing all that. So that's, I guess, how it impacted. Me. Yeah. Yeah. For those folks that weren't with us at the very beginning, um, and you may, perhaps you've not been at a Tuesday at seven. Um, Lee is yeah. giving away, this is an original piece. This, this is, is this an is original drawing. Yeah. I drew like, uh, I think 15 of them or 20 of them. Yeah. And, and if you share this video in the very bottom left hand side of your screen, there's a share button. It could be an arrow. When you share this video, we know it. Mm -hmm. And when you share, we're going to put your name in a drawing next week. And if your name is pulled, 
Right. We're gonna get this original piece of artwork there you go. out to you, and, and what a what a generous uh, generous gift. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down. So <laughs> we had talked about drawing, and you were like, so so then you had gone to some sculpture, and I know that uh, just based upon our quick discussion here, as yes. we stepped into your your studio, there's some reference pieces here. Yeah, I have um, on the wall here. These are, I mean, this is very common for any sculptor and I have like nothing compared to like these big sculptors, but people, they have like cast of famous sculptures. So the eye on the bottom, maybe the rest of it is too, I think, but that's like, I mean, it's Michelangelo's David. And so it's just there as a reference uh, when I'm looking and sometimes I'll make like little mock-ups, just studying it, copying it, like, you know, a mastered copy. They do that with painting too, but but yeah, if you go to a lot of sculptor studios, they're going to have like cast of uh, like Mary from the Pieta and like all these famous sculptures will have cast of them. And it was very common back in the day. Mm -hmm. They kind of got rid of that practice for a while. So now uh, some schools are just kind of getting rid of them. But the, a few of uh, the sculptors kind of collect them and then they sell them online. And so you could buy like a cast of these famous sculptures and use it as your reference so and, that's and it's, pretty cool and it's inspiring too it's inspiring like to say, yeah. this this is this was another artist's vision yeah and uh i love i love sculpture and casting and and so i share your uh yeah I your, love your passion sculpture. for it and, and even like how do how do you uh potentially um sni right so that there's three dimension right in a yeah an eyeball is uh and I have all these books here too. Like I, I'm studying. Like these are really good. But I'll just promo. I'm not getting paid for this. But <laughs> this is this book. What is this? Um, Felipe Sharis Farut. Portrait sculpting. But he has different ones, and they're all really good. These are good. This one, Anatomy for Sculptors, Zarines. That's really good. This is Zarines again. This one's really good. This also is Zarines. And then um, this one is not so good, though. This one, but I, uh, I wanted to, so I went to a residency in Paris, and then I went over to Italy because I wanted to study sculpture. And I'm like, I'm all the way over here because that flight's like a lot, you know? Now that I'm over here, I'm like, I'm going to go see the Statue of David and all this. And I went to the Florence Academy of Art, and they had a, a class on, you know, I can't butcher this name, at Corche, I don't know, but uh, teaching you this. And so I was like, I'll just buy a book and do my own. But it's not that good of a book. It's like, I don't know, it's like beat it up the clay. But hmm. eh, there's something for all of them. You know, you learn something in every book. I have like 100 books. I have a lot of books. I know that uh, it was kind of funny that even some of the comments that occurred as we were kind of just promoting the fact that we were going to meet today. Yeah. I think even Juan said she works in all kinds of different. I do a lot. Uh, all kinds <laughs> of mediums, right? Yeah. Not only your experience as a... Uh, um, as an artist, right, new to certain mediums. Yeah. But you had, you had said that you worked in stone, I think. I do stone carving now. I have, like, like an apprenticeship, kind of. Um, and, yeah, I'm learning everything. Um, so far, I've carved limestone, this giant lion. It's on my Instagram. It's, like, um, I work with Nick Fairplay. And so he's from London. So what happened is... So my mom works at a bakery in Oberlin and meets a lot of people. And she said, oh, somebody came in and said there's this quarry and this really good sculptor. And I was like, all right, well, I'll reach out. Maybe when I get back from you know Europe, I'm not going to do it now. So I came back and I cold called the place and said, I heard there's a good sculptor here. Can I come uh, meet him? And they're like, oh, yeah, people just swing by. And so I go there. And they kind of pre-interviewed me to see if I was like up to par before I even like met him. So make sure I wasn't a waste of his time. And then the next day he called me and said, oh, you're coming in today. Right. And I said, yeah, Long I way. didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> but so I came in and then he was like, what do you want? And I was like, I'm here to take whatever you're going to offer me. And so he's like, OK, well, think of a piece and. I'll let you use my tools for the first piece, then you have to get your own, which I've been slowly buying because they're expensive. And uh, and then he started within a couple of weeks. He said I'd have to work for, with him for two years before he would pay me anything. But after like a month, 
they kind of started letting me work with them. So it's been going really good. It's real. I just learned so much there. So I do that. Um, t t t tell me the process uh, because I, I can't even imagine working on something, you know, limestone or anything that is, you know, that, uh, that difficult to, you know, to, to, to chip away. Um, you said the lion that you're working on was yes. how big, how heavy? It was like 12,000 pounds. It was, there's two of them. It was for this guy's house uh, outside of Columbus. So for his backyard, for his garden. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it was like, I don't know, 10 feet. But it, had, it was like lifted off the ground some, 10 feet, maybe like, I don't know, four or five feet tall. There's two of them. But what you do if you're going to do stone is you would model it in clay like I did here. It's just like an extra step beyond this. So I model it in clay, cast it in like a plaster, a gypsum. Then you, well, you could, I mean, you could just start carving the stone. This is just one thing. To put all these dots you'll see all over it. So if you see like the old masters, they have all these like little holes drilled into them. Those are like depth markers, um, which we did this when we studied like forensic art stuff. But um, they drill these holes in and then that like lets you know how far down to go. And then you kind of carve it out and then you, on the stone piece, you're like moving it from here to here, here to here. There's usually like a point here and then like two points here, like a triangle and this little thing that you pull out. There's videos of me doing it on, on my Instagram, pulling it out and then you move it over and then you, you can drill in or just chisel it out. And then you look at this as your reference as to how it's actually curving and don't mess up because it's set in stone. <laughs> so, <laughs> literally, right? Literally. Yeah. But it's, it's it's a whole process. It takes a long time. Yeah. I'm just happy they let me in on that project. But I was like, they were working on it for years. So I was like, don't mess this up because <laughs> oh, that would be bad. We will share some of those links because I think most artists are visual, <laughs> right? And yeah. we'll love to see that. And we'll, we could just link it right here to this interview. Oh, okay. Um, and then prior to that, I yeah. did. I did. Um, so like when I was doing. The clay stuff, I was like, I need to know how to make these big armatures to hold like thousands of pounds. So I did welding and I went through a full welding program. I'm a certified welder now. And uh, I was the only artist in there. But um, that was intense. So I was going to, I saw this down here and I haven't like, I haven't had this out in a while. But this, <laughs> this was like, we had to make a project. So we, um, uh, CNC'd this out on a machine. They cut out the pieces and I, it, I found like a model online of this line. And then this was stainless steel and I just like, uh, tack welded it together real quick, but you gotta be careful with stainless steel cause, uh, it releases hexavalent chromium, which will super toxic. Everything's toxic. So I try to be healthy. I'm going to ask a, a really random question. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking random is because I love the fact that as we're, is it we're here at your place and yeah. you've got a designated studio space. Yeah. And there's there. And, and I love studio spaces that uh, capture my attention where I can just sit yeah. here in like a swivel chair and look around. And, there's a lot in here. <laughs> but I love the fact, I, I love the fact that there are, that you've got a, uh, Tell us about this floor because yeah, I want to compliment about I, your, your studio. It's the I, floor. Yeah, I loved it too. Yeah. yeah. So, these are like workout tiles, but you know, because I don't want the carpet because you get fuzzies and fuzzies get in your painting or if you spill paint on it, you know, you're, you're kind of screwed then. So I took out the carpet and then these are just like gym tiles. They're square, right? The, yeah. The, the tiles. Like the gym. Yeah. These are cheaper ones, and I piece them together. That way, the floor has some cushiness to it. If I'm like on my knees working on something, and and then also if one got really messed up, I guess I could pull it out and put a new one in and replace the square. But I just I don't know. I've been doing this for some years now. As I when I was moving a lot, I was doing this. I yeah. put them in, and then some of them like it gets like mushed down like here, and it never comes back. But that's okay. It's just the studio. I know we're, uh, we're we're kind of probably rounding third here for the yeah. interview, but I see a st I see stone a stone here, and I see some are these those are chisels, yeah, They're chisels, yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, you know the tools that you use, 
And, um, and is that something that came off a piece or? No. That? So yeah, this piece that. actually, so this is funny because I feel like now I'm a hoarder, but this piece, the stone I've had since high school and my high school teacher, Mr. Farshman, he's the man, he was like, oh, take this and do something with it. And so I've had it all this time and I've never done anything with it. And now I'm doing stone carving. So yeah, these are like, you know, your flat chisels, you got round chisels, then like this where it's like that it's like for a pneumatic which this thing so you would i think this is too small for some of them so you put this in. this is like a mini jackhammer this connects up to the the airline and blows out air and then you're holding this here like this and then you're like chiseling and then this like does like flat areas but like it's it's like heavy and it's so it's like and you have to like hold it in there the whole time so it gets like it's a workout. I, I would it's definitely a workout. I would imagine there might even be a, a like a uh, instead of tennis elbow, you might have like sculptor's elbow. That using a pneumatic. Yeah, you have to wear gloves because like the first day I did, I don't know what happened. My arms were so, they've never hurt so bad in my life. I was like icing them. It didn't happen after that, but like I have these like rubber gloves, and they just get like kind of destroyed though from like there's like holes in them now from just scraping on the stone, but. It's it's a workout, so I don't have to work out my arms anymore. You just, uh, just you just get out in there and sculpt some stone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do we find your content? Where what's the best way? What's your chosen? Because I know that um, I follow you on TikTok. I know that you've got a lot on Instagram. I'm mostly on Instagram uh, at Lee Brooklyn Art. Um, I'm on Facebook. I think that's Lee Brooklyn Art, which I basically post on Instagram and then share it over. But I post more stuff on Instagram what might just be like in the story or something. Uh, yeah, TikTok, I started to post on there. I'm not as active because I don't know if they're banning it or not. <laughs> so I don't want to like waste my time. But um, yeah, mostly on Instagram. My website is uh, LeeBrooklyn.com. So that is not as updated as my Instagram. So my Instagram is kind of like day to day and also some personal stuff sometimes here and there, but that's the best place, Instagram. You've had a show in Chicago. Yes. You've you've been different places around the world. Yeah. Um spent some time doing some street photography out in in Los LA Angeles. and yeah and Los Angeles. Um yeah. is it is there a what do you see as differences? Just, you know, traveling the world or different around the country or are there no differences? Oh, there's differences. Yeah. Like, I mean, every, every part of the country has like a different culture. Um, and the art styles are also different. Um, I think it's good though, traveling and seeing places. It's very different living, moving versus just traveling, but it's good to, uh, actually see what the inside of these museums look like. Like if it's a contemporary, art museum because then I can picture oh if I have a show here someday what the layout is what my possibilities are here and then um yeah the people are just everybody's so different all over I lived in Vermont I lived in Las Vegas Miami everywhere and it's it's just very different and I I'm I'm just right now focused on uh getting new pieces together especially these sculptural pieces um I may or may not be showing with another gallery during at the, the bigger fairs, like during Art Basel and stuff. So, I mean, I show the grenades, but I have somebody else that this may or may not come through. Uh, so that's a possibility. Um, but I'm also focused on getting my name out in all the major cities, especially the ones that are drivable and building my bubbles of networks in these different areas. Cause eventually things start overlapping and you know, I made a lot of friends here as of 2020. Prior to that, I didn't really know anybody. And because I was gone for so long. So now it's like I can do the same thing in Chicago or New York, you know. So I'll have it when I go to New York even. I just run into people that know me or I have a friend in common. So it, it's definitely helpful to do that. Is there, is there something that, uh, that you have planned in the near future? Besides traveling, networking, right, and and getting yourself out into other markets that are drivable, yeah. there's something else that we that that we should know or or hope to see. 
Well, more, more sculptural pieces. Okay. I'm working on these relief sculptures. 